Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And today I want to talk to you about the element gold. And specifically, what is it about biting a gold coin or gold medal that helps prove the theory of relativity? The idea of biting gold to verify its purity is a trope that goes back about 100, maybe 200 years. And it's based on the fact that it's known that pure gold is unusually soft uh, for its position on the periodic table. It's kind of a fun topic. It's actually been covered in a recent paper written by a French numismatist. I'm going to try to put that link up for you in the description below. My apologies in advance if you hit a paywall on that one, but it is a really nice breakdown of exactly what's going on. But essentially what this gentleman is doing here in this photograph is he is conducting what we would call a, a Brunel test or a Vickers test. He's testing the hardness of his metal to see if it's actually pure gold. But what is it about gold that makes it so soft? that one can actually form an indentation by biting it or can actually bend thin gold coins by putting them between the teeth and then prying on them with your fingers. Now, to answer this question, we're going to have to look at how metals bond. So let's take a look at gold specifically and how it bonds. Now, gold has an electron configuration with its outermost electrons in the 6S subshell. And those outermost electrons are what are responsible for most of the bonding interactions in gold. So if we think of the rest of gold's electron cloud as just sort of an, uh, a kernel, a closed kernel of electrons in the inside, we see that the 6S electrons uh, hold these gold atoms together by becoming delocalized into a band of electrons that sort of have free motion throughout the gold sample. The more electrons there are, the more efficiently they're shared, the stronger the metallic bond will be, and therefore the tougher and harder we expect that metal to become. Now, if we do calculations for gold ignoring relativity, what we find is that gold should be a much harder substance than it actually is. So why is gold so soft? Well, gold is soft because of relativity. You see, an object at rest has a mass, of course, that any observer in the same internal frame of reference is going to observe. However, as objects move away or towards us, their so-called relativistic mass is different, and it's dependent on the velocity of that object. We can see here in the calculation for relativistic mass that the faster an object is moving, the larger its relativistic mass will be, eventually becoming infinite at the speed of light. So objects that are moving at a sizable fraction of the speed of light have a relativistic mass that's actually much higher than their resting mass. So why does that matter to how tightly gold hangs on to its outermost electrons? Well, that's because the Bohr radius is a function of a few things as well. And those are the uh, Planck constant, the fine structure constant, the speed of light, which is also constant, and the mass of the electron. So as you can see here, as the mass of the electron changes, so does the Bohr radius, right? The Bohr radius is essentially just a function of the reciprocal of an electron's mass. The more massive the electron, the smaller the Bohr radius, meaning the closer it's going to be held to the atom's nucleus. If we think about what that means for gold, remember that gold has a nucleus that contains 79 protons. That's an enormous amount of charge that's pulling on its electron clouds. And S electrons uh, have some of their orbital density at the nucleus, meaning they're, they, they feel the pull of the nucleus very, very strongly compared to electrons in other subshells. And so this electron here, this, this uh, 6S electron that's orbiting our nucleus, is actually being pulled on unusually hard by that nucleus with 79 protons attracting it. So much so that it's moving at about half the speed of light. And that's fast enough that its relativistic mass is increasing and that results in the Bohr radius decreasing. So gold hangs on to its outermost electrons a lot more tightly than one would anticipate otherwise. Meaning that the metallic bond in gold is very poor since it's hanging on to its electrons more tightly. So ultimately this leads to an element that is uh, significantly softer than one would otherwise anticipate. And this is exactly why you could actually, for thin pieces of gold, we can actually indent them or bend them simply using the pressures that we can attain using our jaw and our fingers. And that, my friends, is how biting a gold medal proves the theory of relativity. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Professor Davis from chemsurvival.com and YouTube channel ChemSurvival. See you next time.